the more data, the better. It's actually, what are we doing with this, inf this data? Are we turning it into information? This is really the next point of what we're doing. We're contextualizing it. How is our asset performing? How are our people performing? How are our processes performing? I guess with that information, we then need to turn it into knowledge, the four steps that we talk about here within Schneider Electric. Am I situationally aware of what's happening with my process, with my people, and with my assets? Once we have all this information, we can then start predicting exactly what's going to be happening with our people, processes, and services. And from there, we can enable us to go into the services piece, which is, OK, I'm going to make a decision as to whether this predictive information is useful, and I'm going to make it affect my process, person, or asset. Or am I going to do that automatically? And am I going to allow technology to make some of those decisions for me? So in this particular instance, a vibration analysis sensor was able, using our software and our, using our, um, our uh, connected devices, edge control and software, we were able to do the early prediction around this turbine failing. Now, the customer in this particular instance said, there's no way that turbine's going to fail. It doesn't fail. We have X amount of years worth of knowledge and history tells us that that's going to be OK. This particular instance, the customer decided to uh, go with the software they'd spent, um, uh, they'd invested uh, in. And in this particular instance, when they took the turbine offline, they found on the picture on the right-hand side that one of the welds had broken on the turbine. Now, can you imagine if they hadn't have heeded the advice of the predictive analytics? This thing would have blown up. The downtime would have been into the millions, probably the tens of millions. Imagine the same philosophy being applied to um, some information coming out of one of Morrow's competitor's drives, because one of his wouldn't fail, but a competitor's drive that was on its way down. Or a conveyor, or whatever, whatever. We can even move it into escalators, lifts. Let's keep going. With this predictive analytics that we can provide this knowledge and wisdom, we can prevent all of this stuff happening. Now let's go a step further. Let's say uh, our system knows and predicts that in 12 weeks' time, this little motor on a conveyor is going to go down. Then it places an order in the SAP system to order another one in. Let's say when the, the motor turns up in inventory, we then send a work order out to, a, to an engineer to go and install the motor. Meanwhile, the process hasn't stopped. Meanwhile, it's been planned. Meanwhile, it's been accounted for. This is the world that we can supply today. This is the world we're working towards from the very small end of town to a, a temperature sensor ultimately telling us that a motor's on its way down or a vibronic sensor telling us a motor's on its way down to the big end of town where a turbine's about to blow up and probably cause an awful lot of damage. Thank you.